welcome to online classes of class 12 geography and uh, for session 2020-21 as per uh, CBSE board syllabus we are having three books in geography one is fundamentals of human geography second Indian economy dealing with the Indian uh, aspects and third is the practical geography now I'm not going to discuss anything related to the blueprint of the syllabus directly I'll move to the first chapter of the fundamentals of human geography and today I'm going to uh, deal up with the topic of aims and definition of human geography already I have given the PDF but now I'm just relating with the explanation part of that PDF before proceeding with the main topic there are some things that we should keep it in mind number one is that we have already studied in class 11 geography which is an integrated science that means that we have taken various aspects from physical sciences like from chemistry from botany from zoology from astronomy from mathematics as well as from social sciences like from political science history economics etc and so on and it is also having two approaches systematic and regional approaches geography is a branch of study that belongs to a systematic approach now human geography studies locational and distributional aspects of cultural phenomena locational aspects means where the area is what a, what sort of area whether it is a mountainous area whether it is a plain area whether it is a deserted land and distributional aspect how the population is accustomed or how the population is adjusted with the locational factors here the cultural phenomena means the human activity next point cultural phenomena are the results from changing human and nature interaction now as in the early ages we have seen that man was totally used to follow what nature used to dictate but with the advancement of technology man follows the nature rather na nature follows the man because now man is able to curb the natural activities now outside the temperature is nearly touching 38 degrees Celsius but inside we can feel the temperature of 24 degrees Celsius that means we are able to curb the natural phenomena this is what termed as cultural phenomena are the results from changing human and na nature interaction how is it possible that we can do the cultivation in the mountainous tract with the help of step farming so this is what the continuous interaction is changing where the human is also changing and the nat natural activities are also changing and all this aspects of human geography has been evolved out in the later half of 19th century now I'm proceeding with the functions of human geography the first function of human geography is spatial or locational analysis spatial analysis or locational analysis focuses on spatial variation between areas now spatial variation between areas means we are having lots of varieties or diversity of physiography mountain plain plateau island group desert as such they are having their variety in climatic conditions in the landforms so this indicates the spatial analysis second ecological analysis it relates to human environment linkages now the man or the human society that belongs to a hot desert obviously it will vary with the cold desert areas people who are residing in Rajasthan their activities will not be the same those who are living in Leh Ladakh region so this is ecological analysis regional synthesis 
it deals with the identification of regions that is internal morphology ecological linkages and external relationships now what is this internal morphology within a plateau when we say peninsular plateau the peninsular plateau is divided into two the northern part of narmada we term it as a central highland but it is a peninsular plateau and in the southern part of narmada we term it as a deccan plateau so the internal morphology varies ecological linkages how the people living in the areas of western ghat are linked up with the areas of the people of the western coastal plain that is ecological linkages and external relation how a country is related with the another country for various reasons maybe specifically for the trading activities so all these relates to the external relations so these are the three basic task of functions of human geography now the next topic is aims of human geography to study the spatial distribution of human facts human facts means how the population is distributed over the land surface where the population is dense where the population is scarce or sparse this is the spatial distribution of human facts number 2 to study about the regional variation in the functional relation between human and environment already i have explained in the previous part that the function will vary from a hot desert area and from a cold desert area so the functional relationship that means the people those who are engaged with the economic activities of the hot desert will obviously not follow the same sort of economic activity those who are staying in the leh ladakh region so this is about the regional variation in the functional relation between human and environment number 3 to study about the spatial organization resulted from economic and physical environment now here the word spatial organization has been indicated how the entire country get organized that is with the help of means of transportation and why it is very much needed because every physical environment is having its own aspects and cultural phenomena and what is the resultant of it there are various types of economic activities that is related to this variation of physical environment thus wise the country or a region is organized with the means of transportational aspects that is termed as spatial organization so now what we can conclude the main aim of human geography is to study about the interactive relationship between man environment and economic activities all together what we can say that what is the center point to study human geography or what is the pivotal point of human geography man is considered as the pivotal point of human geography now in human geography till now we have seen that this geography is not only the natural activities it is directly interlinked with the human activities also so there are many physical aspects as well as the cultural aspects which are interconnected or which are indicated or described by using various metaphors from the human anatomy let us see some examples from the physical environment when we say the earth normally we use face of the earth storm we say eye of the storm when the river meets with the saline water means ocean we say mouth of the river the nose of the glacier or the snout of the glacier isthmus where the two large land masses are connected by a narrow stretch of land mass we term it as a neck of the isthmus 
and the soil. It is having its categories, it is having its stratification. We term it as a profile of the soil. Now next, cultural environment. Now state, country, city. What is its basic aspect or what is its basic phenomena? It is continuously in a growing stage. And the thing that we can, uh, that is used to describe is the living organism. Why it is so? That we know living organism is also having the concept of growth. So similarly, a state, a country or a city also grows. So it is connected with living organism. Networks of transportation, whether it is railways, roadways, waterways, it is helping to connect the entire region, area, country, world, making it as a global village. So continuously there is a circulation of various aspects. Thus wise, it is connected with or it is described with the arteries of circulation. Like we are having the veins and arteries in the human body circulating the blood for our survival. So for the survival of a nation, for the development of a nation, the transportation do the work of arteries of circulation. Now we will proceed with the definition of human geography. There are three basic definitions related to the human geography. The first one is given by a German geographer, Radzel. According to him, human geography is a synthetic study of a relationship between human society and Earth's surface. Now here, the basic key word that has been described in the definition is synthesis. Synthesis means what? We are making a small part of every region and then we combining it to make a one whole. Here whole means one entire structure. For example, when we say Purulia, it's one district and when we do the subdivision of it, we get the blocks. So when the blocks are united together, we get Purulia district. So a part is uh, combined to form a connected whole. So the blocks are combined to make the Purulia district. According to German geographer Ellen C. Sempel, human geography is the study of changing relationship between the unresting man and the unstable earth. Now, with the advancement of technology, there is continuous change. And this change has been described by the key word dynamism. The word dynamis, dynamism means which is not stable, which is not static. So continuously, the technology is developing. Man is increasing their level of technology. And as a result, they are interacting with the natural resources and they are making the earth surface unstable. The mountains are transformed into a flat areas. The rivers are being tamed out and the dams are being constructed. So the entire earth surface is getting unstable. The third definition is given by a French geographer, Blash. This is the new concept of the definition of human geography. It is resulting from a more synthetic knowledge of the physical laws governing our earth and of the relations between the living being which inhabit it. Now, what is the basic concept of this definition? That how the present human society interacts with the earth's surface. What is the relationship between the earth and the man of the present scenario is the basic concept behind this definition. So, today we discussed about the function, that is the aim and the definition of human geography. There are no further questions given based upon the topic. Your task is to learn the facts that has already been given in the PDF. Thank you.